and we're going to the Institute of Archaeology. Today, we're joined by Ms. Rumari Ku, who's a conservation officer, as well as Mr. Josue Ramos, who's an archaeologist, discussing an upcoming symposium and activities planned. So good morning to both of you. Welcome to SUNUP. How good are you morning. doing? Good, good. And thanks for having us here. I mean, and as you rightly said, we are here to do some promotion on our upcoming symposium. Okay. It's the 18th annual symposium. With a got it. With a got it for 18. Yeah. Yes. Almost as old as you. Anyways, but <laughs> we just like throw shade at you. Just like throw shade. Just he's a shady person. Under the so, shade, he flourishes. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay. This... Uh, upcoming symposium. What is it about? Uh, the Institute of Archaeology has a number of different things and one of those activities is the publication of research. Okay. Science-based research that is done throughout Belize dealing not only with Maya archaeology but looking at even before the pre maya the archaic period, looking at the historic, the recent past of the historical aspect of Belize. So over the years, we have many researchers that apply to do research in Belize okay. through the Institute of Archaeology. And part of their permitting is that they have to participate in these activities. Oh, to interesting. To present to the general public, to the students, to tour guides. And obviously, the medias are always welcome to attend to these events. All right. So, we have this thing for 18 years right now, right? So, I'm thinking... Is the research recycled? Is it always new research? Like what, is, how, what happens when it comes to that realm of research? It's all new research and also oh. updating information. Oh. I was about to ask yes. because I, when we had a niche here previously, we found out that in order to become an artifact, you have to have a certain amount of years. That's 100 mm. years, yes, 100 right? Years. 100 years. So every year there's something added on to that. Yeah. Is this like some of the new things that you guys will be bringing as well? Yes, we have recent new excavation and also we okay. have um, like labo laboratory analysis that wow. has been on the pipeline. And due to the pandemic, I must highlight, we had a little break. Okay. But we are excited to be back and it will be in person, obviously, oh, okay. respecting protocols, distance and all those things. So make sure you, if you are interested, you can do early registration. We have online registration. But also, you can come in early every morning, uh, starting at 7.30, you register to attend. And obviously, there are small fees for the general public, but the important thing is it's free for Belizean students with a student ID. Ah. So we want to make sure that the students, the schools take advantage, and they come and hear to different papers. And they it have also a, influence what they do their future papers on to us. Yes, well. that's kind of what we were encouraging for when students come in. You just present the ID, your free entrance, and it's because it's for students. It's really important that you are aware of the research that is happening in your country. Yeah. And as you said, it's new research, but also research from the past that is being updated. So when these papers come to light, you can sit down and really see something that happens. You, you're like, okay, this excavation, people were digging around my house. You can come to the symposium and find out what was actually happening and ask your nice. questions. There is actually a session for discussion okay. where you can have a one-on-one -on -one with the researchers and ask your own questions. So it's really important that Belizeans attend. Also, you can really dig deeper to figure out, like, you know, all those probing questions yes. you're wondering. Yes, yes, I'm sorry, maybe I may have missed it. Uh, the date? The date is from the 29th of June to the okay. 1st of July. Okay, and where, where exactly? This is at the San Ignacio Hotel in San Ignacio, Cayo. Okay, yes. all right. Yeah. And the times you said again? Uh, the registration starts at 7.30 every morning. Okay. The paper actually starts at 8, and they run up to like 4.35 in the evening. Okay, and you said... So it's a full three-day discussion. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So, and you said also that... Um, you could register online where where we you can go to our website actually we've been updating the facebook where you can just scan the qr code um when you register you can get a online program where you can write your notes we're trying to go into the digital realm Save the saving trees. exactly saving yeah. paper <laughs> um and you can get your program online and you can also download the summary schedule where you have all the presenters your little oh. notes there so when you reach you just scan the qr code and Walk right in. Just go straight yes. through. And you can register you. online. So when you come in for registration, it's not, you don't have to deal with that hassle. You just come in, you're already in the list, and walk right in. So 
And it's important to do pre-registration because obviously the sitting capacity is limited. I was just going to ask yes. that. Is so, there a capacity? So going on the, on the website and looking at the different yes. topics. Uh -huh. So you can say, okay, I'm interested in this day. I'm going to register for this day. Obviously, we'd love for you guys to come every single uh, every day. Every single day. <laughs> but we understand that there are some specific interests for particular, particular groups. And also the tour guides take a lot of advantage of this to update themselves. Nice. So most of the times, tour guides receive guests, and these guests are well educated. And so we want to make sure that the, our tour guides are also up to date with the information when it comes to archaeology. Because sometimes I've heard some tour guides say some things, and I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> wow, this is not what I learned. And I'm pretty sure it's not our history as well. But um, could you give us, like, tease us with some of the topics that people, some of the exciting topics? So we have, like I mentioned at the beginning, we have varying topics. We have some looking at the archaic uh, era. Okay. So uh, one of the projects that comes quickly to mind is the one that they are currently working up in the Bladen. They are doing excavations in the rock shelters. And it's important to note that in these rock shelters, the preservation is much better than on the open air because Belize is a very wet, humid right. environment. Mm -hmm. So preservation in general areas is very limited. While at these rock shelters, we tend to have better preservation. And when you say rock shelter? Rock shelters caves. are the, like the cliffs, the sides of the mountain that kind of have a little... Ledge over. Ledge over. Than, the water not getting as easily. So, and yes, right. and okay. it has, or has limited water penetration, yeah. Okay. So it's not a cave, but it's like have a formation off and has a little, that sheds the... Okay. So that kind of adds to the preservation. And here we are retrieving um, complete skeletal remains of the archaic period, which dates back to like 10,000 BC. Wow. And, and yeah, and we also come to a different era where we're also doing some salvage excavations. Uh, in, we know that the demand for food is high, but also have to take in consideration that we don't compromise the archaeology for food production. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. So there is an ongoing project, and they will also be presenting on their findings through these salvage excavations. And it's also an opportunity to educate the farmers, listen, these are the information that we're going to lose if you just go out freely and do your clearing and plowing. Yeah. And so you mentioned there's a cost for people that are not students. What would be the cost for people that it's are not students? It's 10 Belize dollars for Belizeans and 20 for non-residents. Okay, perfect. And so they can go and register at 730, pay that fee, and come in. I know it's an all-day event, so people will be able to buy food or...? There are coffee breaks throughout the symposium, so you can be provided there. But for lunch, it would be... Yeah, would be we good. break at lunch. You can go downtown or you can eat at San Ignacio Hotel if you like. But you're free to go around town and use your area for lunch, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, in, in terms, of, and I'm quite curious about it, we hear a term called modern history. Um, being history right around, or history happening now or in the, pre, in the recent past. Recent past, right. I'm more interested in hearing about that. And is there any topics based on that? Yes, we actually have some paper um, of research being done at St. George's Key. As you all know, okay. that was British Honduras, uh, uh, Belize's first capital. All right. So there are some papers that, that will be looking at the historical aspect of archaeology, specifically out in St. George's Key. Oh, wow. Yes. And in terms, and I know as well, not recent history, but our modern history, but recently we celebrated our first um, Emancipation Day. And I know that there was a lot of, of artifacts that came out with that. Will those be as well in this symposium? Well, um, the historic papers, they look at the different things, such as they highlight some of the tools, and but they also highlight the different... Um, I would say entities that played a role in okay. obviously slavery, the slave owners, right. and also the different regiments. Of, okay. And also had that at one point having the people who were enslaved, but they were given the opportunity to participate in the different regiments that assisted the British to police the, the colonists at that time. Uh -huh. So at 
any given time you will see some highlights and they will say, okay, these are part of that. So oh, there, nice. there is a co correlation to whatever artifacts that are found that can build up the story or the history of the historic or the recent past. I mean, it, it was so interesting in finding out that conversation um, where the bangles and how the, the importance of the bangles that we wear today because I've always found it interesting that when we go to the States and they immediately identify Belizeans by the bangles. Really? Yes, they do. The immigration officers, they do. And um, when finding that out and seeing how it played out into now and how Belizeans still wear the bangles, I'm like, oh, wow, that's something interesting. So I could imagine with this symposium here, you have a lot of things, and especially for students, going in and finding out, okay, well, this is what, why we do this today based on the history that we've, we've had. You know. And I must highlight that the, we have about roughly 27 projects that are spread out through the country. So people say, oh, that's what this tent in this neighborhood is doing. They are excavating. So they are spread from north to south, even out at key. And I think that's really important because there are 27 projects here, and I doubt a lot of people know about them. And it's a really nice thing where you can just go and volunteer. Um, you also, can, it's open so you can be active. Here. Especially for students. Yes, exactly. Um, I just graduated, and it's something that the symposium I've been attending for years, and you can be informed about what's happening. You can meet these researchers and you can go and say, okay, there's excavations happening at Shunatunich. Can I volunteer? You can get the feet, the hands-on work and really wow. get dive into what you're studying. I came out with a degree in this, so it's really important that I have that background there. And these papers can really show you the different side of it. So Will there really be important. anything like... Um any, any actual artifacts on display that people can see too as well? Or? No, we don't have artifacts there, but we will have a number of different posters that highlight specific topics okay. of and I, that, these particular research. There is a paper that highlights ceramic um, collections, so they will be talking about these little things right there where you can learn but, a little bit more. But obviously there are numerous different images of not yes. only Maya, but archaic and historic. So depending on the different topic of paper, you will see a numerous amount of images of artifacts in context and the excavations units. Perfect. So people that are out there are like wondering, they just not talk to me, now they're going to show you some pictures you can get visuals <laughs> yes. along the way so you don't feel like they're just talking to you. So yeah, it's going to have that real nice feel where... Yes. You can see what's going on. And of on. course, you can still ask your questions. You can just see, like, so okay, there's what be was after? happening. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of after. every paper, we have a Q&A yes. session. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whenever we're running out of time, we tend to put three papers together, the Q&A, at the end of that, because then we'll okay. have Makes three sense. or four. Yeah. So some of the, the speakers that will be there, um, could you give us a little tease on We that? have uh, numerous nationalities. We have also Belizeans. We have our... Former, former director, and that he is popularly known, Dr. Hamiawe. He's presenting okay. on all his work he does with the Beaver Project, which entails Kahalpech, Shunantonich, Bikin Pat area. And we'll have our most recent pa former director, um, Dr. John Morris. He has a project at Aguacate, which is just behind Spanish Lakot. He will also have a paper. We have other Belizeans that are co authors with other in international researchers. Okay. Uh, we have Syrian national, as I mentioned. They are from Canada, USA, England. So it's a good place to meet, like Romare said. If you are a student and you're debating whether archaeology or a field that can be related, because you have to remember that it's not just archaeology, it's not just history. There are many different avenues or disciplines that you can involve. Archaeology is not just one thing, though. No. You have those that love technology, let's say photography, video, um, surveying using GIS, maneuvering Google Earth, um, if you're into biology, chemistry, to do analysis, because right. yeah. to get those dates you need chemists. So there is a wide range of disciplines. Wow. So as a young individual, this is where you can come and meet and have discussion one-on-one -on -one with these professionals and can guide, guide you. Yeah. And they can open avenues to say, listen, next field school season, you can come and volunteer with us. Yeah. Yes. That's going to so be great. Opportunities got Opportunities well. and collaboration, yeah. and it's a great way to just learn in general. I just really want to thank you both for sharing this with us.
people, it's right here. They can be able to check out all this information on your Facebook page as well, right? Yes. And could you just share with us your Facebook page so they can be able to know? The and Institute of Archaeology, uh, Niche Belize. Okay, yes. Institute of Archaeology, Niche Belize for the schedule, for who's yeah. going to be presenting register. And we register. have a website as well, yes. specifically for the symposium. Oh, nice. Okay. You just look yeah. up Belize Archaeology Symposium and it will pop right out. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So guys, if you want a direct feed, you can go to the website, you could register, you can know and plan your day accordingly. There are three days, go to all of them. If you can't go to all of them, go to at least one and see the different topics that really pertain to your interest. And pique your interest, curiosity is amazing, guys. And so we're going to learn from all these amazing researchers that are looking into our country, seeing what we have to offer. And let's see what we can learn from this. So thank you so much thank for you. being yeah. here. Thank you guys for having us. And hope to see